Hi, this is Dr. Mark Hyman. Welcome back. Are you heavy? It could be making you sick and tired and age prematurely. And I don't mean heavy with fat. I mean heavy with heavy metals like mercury. Unfortunately, toxic mercury problems are pretty common. Along with polar bears, beluga whales, ducks, otters, panthers, and almost all river fish, as well as most large ocean fish, we humans are poisoning ourselves with mercury at ever-increasing rates. There's no doubt about it. Mercury is the most alarming disease-causing source of environmental toxicity that I see daily in my practice. So many of my patients have toxic levels of mercury and they're not alone. I personally suffered from mercury toxicity and chronic fatigue, of which I cured myself in part by getting rid of the mercury in my body. So I know about this firsthand. How did I get toxic? Well, I polluted myself by growing up on tuna fish sandwiches, eating sushi, living in Beijing, which heats all its homes with coal, a source of uh, major mercury poisoning in the environment, and having a mouthful of amalgam or mercury fillings. All of these exposures, combined with my genes, that prevent me from effectively detoxifying metals in my body, led to a slow and significant poisoning of my cells, and the effects were obvious. I was tired, I was weak, I couldn't think, I had muscle pain and twitches, insomnia, digestive problems, food allergies, depression, anxiety, but it was only by discovering high levels of mercury in my hair and urine and slowly detoxifying myself that I was able to get better. I've seen this over and over in my patients too, from chronic fatigue to fibromyalgia to depression, anxiety, obesity, dementia, Parkinson's disease, cancer, heart failure, heart disease, the message is clear. We're being poisoned. And this is such an important public health and personal issue for so many people that I'm using this blog to, and the next one as well to fully explain the extent of mercury issues. I'll show you the science behind the mercury and share some stories about patients who have suffered and talk about the way we need to deal with it. But first I'd like to share with you what I learned a few years ago at one of the most important international conferences on mercury yet to be held. It was called The Impact of Mercury on Human Health and the Environment. And it was presented at Tulane University School of Public Health in, in, in New Orleans. There was a unique international group of policymakers, environmental scientists, toxicologists, biochemists, journalists, academic physicians, practicing pediatricians, neurologists, and dentists who were gathered. We were there to make sense of the environmental impact, toxicology, basic science, public policy, and health implications of one of the least studied and perhaps the greatest threats to our long-term health, mercury. I'll be using this week's blog to discuss some of what I learned at the conference. Number one, mercury levels are on the rise. Dr. Barry Cole is an adjunct professor at Tulane and he provided a unique overview of the impact of industrialization on environmental mercury levels through a description of the levels of mercury in the ice cores extracted from the pristine Fremont Glacier in Wyoming. See over the past hundred years there's been a 30-fold increase in mercury deposition, 70 percent of which is from human sources. In fact there was an exponential peak in mercury occurring in the last 40 years due to major industrialization. So where does all this mercury come from? Well, much of it comes from coal-fired industrial plants and from chloralkali plants that use mercury in the process of making chlorine used in plastics, pesticide, PVC pipes, and more. Also, we learned that risk increases with the dose. Harvey Clewell from Environ Health Sciences Institute reviewed the epidemiologic studies from Seychelles and Faroe Islands. He showed that the risk of toxicity increases with higher doses of mercury. Also, we learned about the health effects of mercury. How do we get mercury in our body? Well, sources are widespread and include mercury vapors in the ambient air, ingestion via drinking water, fish, dental fillings, vaccines, occupational exposures, home exposures including fluorescent light bulbs, thermostats, batteries, red tattoo dye, skin lightening creams, and over-the-counter OTC products such as contact lens fluid, neosinephrine, and more. Now, you absorb about 80% of the inhaled mercury vapor and nearly 100% of mercury in fish from your gut. The mercury is then distributed in the brains and the kidneys and can be readily transferred by the placenta to the fetus. It's also eliminated by urine and feces and expired air and breast milk. The major toxicity is from mercury's ability to bind to sulfur-containing molecules in the body found in nearly every enzyme as well as the mitochondria, those energy producing factories, as well as other chemical binding sites in our cells. So it literally jams our biochemistry. So how does this affect us and our kids? Well the symptoms and diseases of these exposures have been varied and, and may mimic other problems. So they're confused with other diseases. But they include nervous system toxicity with symptoms of shyness or emotional 
uh, volatility or nervousness or insomnia or memory problems or hard, hard time concentrating. They have other neurologic problems like uh, Parkinson's symptoms, tremor, uh, loss of balance, impaired hearing, tunnel vision, slurred speech, headache, fatigue, impaired sexual function, and depression. It can also cause kidney toxicity with protein in the urine and also digestive symptoms like nausea and vomiting and colitis. It can also cause skin problems like dermatitis and, and, and gum disease and, and sores in the mouth and, and too much salivation. So mercury toxicity is a serious issue. Now what about dentistry and mercury? Well, silver fillings or amalgams contain inorganic mercury. Now mercury exposure from amalgams is estimated to be between 3 and 17 micrograms a day from chewing, brushing, grinding, or even slow corrosion. It takes a long time to clear mercury from the body. So once it's in, it comes out very slowly. In fact, people with amalgam fillings have significantly elevated blood mercury levels, three to five times more mercury in the urine, and two to 12 times more mercury in their tissues than those without fillings. However, blood and urine mercury levels don't really relate that well to the mercury load in your body tissues or the severity of your symptoms. See, research on sheep and monkeys with dental fillings have shown that the blood mercury levels remain low even though their tissue mercury levels were high. And urine mercury levels aren't really much better because they mainly reflect the cumulative dose of inorganic mercury in the kidneys and there exists only a very weak correlation with levels in other target tissues. So kidneys don't always tell us the real story in urine. But the American Dental Association says it's still safe to use mercury or silver fillings. And that's something I've always wondered about, considering that the EPA, or the Environmental Protection Agency, considers mercury, once it's removed from old fillings, to be toxic waste that has to be disposed of as such. Let me put this another way. It's apparently all right to put mercury fillings in your mouth, but it's not okay to throw them in the garbage. It's actually illegal. So before you start taking your fillings out, consider this. There are other things you can do to reduce your exposure and to identify if you have toxic levels of mercury. Now I'd like to sum up what we learned today and offer some suggestions for reducing your exposure. One, industrial exposure to mercury is significant and comes from coal burning mostly, 220 million pounds a year, and chloralkali plants. Two, the main ways that humans are exposed are from contaminated fish and fillings in your mouth. Three, mercury can affect nearly all of your organs, especially brain, heart, kidneys, and gut. Four, Many chronic diseases can be worsened by mercury, including neurologic disease, ADD, autism, heart disease, autoimmune disease, and more. Five, some of us are genetically better adapted to getting rid of the mercury than others, leading to variable effects in the population, so not everybody is equally affected. Six, you should reduce your exposure by never eating river fish and limiting your other fish consumption to small wild fish. If it fits in your pan, it's probably okay. And also avoiding tuna, swordfish, shark, tilefish, and more. Blood tests are relatively worthless for analyzing mercury toxicity unless you've had a lot of recent exposure to eating fish like sushi or tuna. Hair tests only check for mercury from fish and not from fillings, so they'll only give you a partial picture. The only way to find out your total body load of mercury is to take a medication with the sulfur molecules that bind to the mercury like flypaper. This is called DMSA or DMPS. If you are toxic and sick, you may consider addressing your dental health by seeing a biological dentist who can safely help you deal with the mercury in your mouth. Going to see a conventional dentist who drills out your fillings without any precautions or protection can lead to serious health consequences and I strongly advise against it. However, it can be done safely and effectively. Next time, I'm going to give you more advice on how to safely eliminate the mercury from your body if you find you're toxic.